So good morning, Facebook. Good morning, good morning. Um, my name is Kelly, as you already know. I want to start off by saying, the reason why I'm doing these Facebook Lives is to keep those who are interested in my back and forth with the school board, the TDSP, the D TDSB, the trustees, and uh, sit in the city in itself. Um, just to give you a quick, quick recap. There was a girl who was murdered about 10 years ago. There's a memorial for her up the street. I find the memorial disrespectful and inappropriate. It was uh, placed beside two, um, two dumpsters and I find that repulsive. So I contacted a few people. Uh, next thing you know, I was on the news. I spoke a little bit about her and what I'm doing right now is just keeping you guys up to date on what's going on. So since I made that video, um, I've been contacted by a lot of people, positive and negative, mostly positive. And believe it or not, a lot of the people are, are across Canada, like right to um, Edmonton, Alberta, for as far east as New Brunswick. People sending me messages on Facebook, either telling me about a story about uh, of uh, abuse or just saying great, great work. Um, but... What I want to focus is on focus on are, are the the people who met me here who 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 I went out to I went out with went out with them to have coffee I've seen them a couple times and they're giving me uh, let's say the inside of the inside of being a teacher so um, with the situ with the situation one of the teachers we, we had a, a giant lunch together was really fantastic one of the teachers posed a really interesting question. And what she said was, the memorial, of course, that's an issue and that's a, a problem, but what's deeper? What, what's, what's behind that? And, and what, what she was, what she was, um, what she was saying was, why didn't any teacher notice that this little girl was being abused? When they found her body, she had 70 wounds, like old wounds. Her teeth was through her lip. She had a hole in her finger so deep that you could see the bone and she had cracked ribs. Now, for those of you guys who play any kind of sports, boxing, uh, baseball, basketball, uh, gymnastics, track and field, anything. If you've ever been winded, you know that it's, it's almost impossible to keep moving forward. You have to be like one tough SOB to keep moving after being winded. Now I had my ribs uh, cracked in, um, I was sparring with my friend back in, I think 2007, we were sparring and he cracked my ribs by accident. And I swear, like that was the worst pain I've ever felt. And I've, I've felt all kinds of, I've been injured multiple times over the years. It was the worst pain I've ever felt. So imagine this little girl going to school every day with cracked ribs and no one notices that this little girl's wheezing this little girl's holding her chest this little girl can barely run um she, she's showing showing obvious signs of being hurt now i believe and so do many of the teachers believe that there was obvious signs of her being hurt but there's there's a problem that most teachers or all teachers in the TDSB, I won't speak for all the teachers across Canada, but the teachers here are wrapped up in so much red tape that they're unable to help. I'll give you an example. So there's a, a there was a little girl named Jordan Blakely. Um, she was t 10 years old and she was accepted to the gifted program. Now when she entered the gifted program, there was other t uh, students there, obviously, right? One of the boys immediately attacked Jordan, physically, verbally, um, mentally, mentally meaning like hiding her stuff, really teasing her, just really getting under her skin. One of the things he, he would do was uh, he would put his hands down his pants, grab his genital and then rub her, her head. Um, this kid, this little young boy, he was known for grabbing items and chasing other students around. The teachers would have to gather all the students and hide them in the stairwell while waiting for this little boy to stop his tantrum. And um, my, my question is, well, my solution is just get him out of there, right? This is, this is a school. This is not a, like, a, it's a privilege to go to school. It's not a right, right? M many people might argue that, but 
Uh, I think if you're if you're acting inappropriate or inappropriately due to the circumstances, you should go. Your kids should be pulled out. Well, the, the point that I'm trying to make is that the teacher could not do anything other than grab the rest of the students and bring them to another place and allow this young boy to cool down. If it takes them five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, that's how long it takes. But they, the ki other kids will sit in the stairwell waiting for this young boy to calm down. Now think about the trauma that these young, uh, young children are facing. These are 10 year olds. Whether they're 10 year olds or 50 year olds, but when people are gathered together in, in, a, in a gathered together in a crowd in a panic state and transferred somewhere else, we all know about groupthink. So if one person, one kid's panicking and screaming and crying, then the rest of them are going to feel the energy of that kid. And what you do when you do that is you, you, you teach the kid a learned behavior, what they're going to take through the rest of their life. Maybe, uh, being scared of stairwells, being scared of crowds, being scared of the item that this kid was uh, threatening the rest of the class with. What would be a better result would be to give the teachers more power to actually single out this child, call their parents and tell the parents to get their child out. But you, the uh, uh, teachers are, are unable to do that for a couple of different reasons. So while these teachers were talking, speaking to me, I took some notes. And uh, one of the reasons why the teachers uh, don't, are unable to help, because I believe if someone wants to be a teacher, if someone aims to be a teacher, like, you're obviously not doing it for the salary. It's well known that teachers are underpaid, uh, uh, mistreated, and under, and not appreciated. So one of the, one of the things you could guess and make an educated guess is when someone b becomes a teacher, they're becoming a teacher because they care about children. But one of the reasons why they're unable to step in is that there, there, there's a fear of being sued. So if a teacher was to call home and, and say, oh, actually, let's just take Jordan's case, for, for instance. We'll just stick with hers for, for now. If Jordan goes home and tells her dad, dad, I'm being bullied at school. Her dad comes to school, speaks to the teacher. The teacher cannot tell the parent which child is doing this. The teacher cannot say, Oh, it's Rodney picking on Jordan because that's a breach of privacy. That's a breach of all kinds of information. So what, what, what this does is, and remember, I'm speaking hypothetically. I'm giving an example here. What this does is put Jordan in a state where she's questioning her own sanity. A boy is picking on her. She goes and tells her father. Her father asks the teacher and the teacher says, well, I can't tell you who. So it's a, it's a giant game of not it, not it. Not it. Like anyone you ask, they're just like, not it. That person, not it. So it's a giant game of not it while this kid has to continuously go to school and get bullied um, uh, emotionally, verbally, mentally, and so on and so forth. So back to the, the case of um, the, the young girl who was murdered 10 years ago, the one, uh, the, young, uh, the, young, the young girl who I'm trying to get this memorial, uh, a proper memorial for her. Um, going back to her situation, I, I, I it, it still is, when you hear about the injury, injuries of 70 wounds, a hole through her finger that is so deep that you can see the bone, her teeth through her lip. I've seen boxing matches, UFC matches, karate matches, kick, t uh, uh, taekwondo matches, w brutal, brutal fights. You, you can even go, you can probably go on YouTube right now and just type in most brutal fights and you will not see people's teeth going through their, their lip. That is a, 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 like a extremely blunt force causing serious harm to this young young girl. And remember, that th that was not the injury that killed her. That was just an injury that she has sustained months before and still exhibited the injuries, which I would love to hear what the teachers had to say when she when when someone posed the question, what happened to your face? And she must have been trained to lie and said, I fell down. Even if you were to fall down, you're, you're, you can bite your tongue. You can knock your teeth out. But how would your teeth go through your lip? You know, it would have to be, someone would have to hold you down and beat you. That's the only way it would happen. So with the, with the TDSB and the school board that I'm speaking to, they're choosing to, to ignore me completely. They've sent me some emails, very ge generic emails, which I find, I find really interesting that 
I'm not I'm not a, a person who's complaining about I don't know uh, their them watering the grass too often during the summer. I'm talking about a dead girl's memory. That is what I'm speaking about. But it goes back to thinking when we think about uh, the people in power. I remember as a child, and you probably do too that you thought your parents knew everything. And as you got older, you realize your parents don't really know shit. And then you fall in love with some professor or teacher at school and that person seems like they know all the answers. And then you realize, wait a minute, maybe they might not. And then you start searching the world for mentors. So I remember when I was younger, I would think that people in power knew something that I didn't know. So if you were a prime minister, if you were a mayor, if you were a president, if you were the leader of a board, or even if you were on a board, I thought that you knew something that I did not know. That's why you're on that in that position. And now I'm coming to realize that most of these people are there for a paycheck because it pays good. It pays good to be on a board, many of the boards, right? It pays really good except for um, nonprofit organizations. I've been, on, uh, I've been on the board of a couple different uh, nonprofits and I haven't got a check once, but that's the part, that's the beautiful thing about um, nonprofit. You're there to do some work for the people. Now, for what is what is funny or interesting is that I'm speaking about when I speak about Jordan's case with her being bullied by a young boy who's who's, you know, putting his hands down his pants or rubbing her hair. When I speak about Caitlin, the young girl who was murdered 10 years ago, when I could speak about there's a, a teacher named Sean Goldman. He was he was talking about his school at Black Black Creek in Lawrence. And he said that the teachers there are, um, they nicknamed the school Millhaven. Now, if you don't know what Millhaven is, Millhaven is a, a penitent, maximum, peni maximum penitentiary in Ontario. Um, the only reason I know that is because, well, I, I, I have friends who've been to the pen. But uh, another reason was, I remember back in, I think, 2011, there was a, a manager of the prison who used to traffic drugs in and out. And when, a, when he got busted, he, suddenly he was found dead at, in his home. So obviously that was a, you know, there was some deep ties to organized crime there. But when I'm speaking about the school board and the TDSB, you feel like it has that organized crime aura to it because I'm making requests and they're just pushing me out because I guess I'm not family or I'm not in the in crowd or maybe they're just, well, basically they're saying, fuck that little girl who gives a shit. She's dead. Like, what's your, what's your problem? And, um, I, I've, in being in this situation, I've realized a couple different things. I know, so for some of you, because some people have written this to me, that building a memorial is not the school's problem. I get it. Good. The building a memorial is not the school's problem. It's not the TDS's, it TDSB's problem. It's not even the city's problem, right? But it's still a problem. When a young little girl gets murdered or if someone dies before their time in a tragic way, they should be remembered somehow. Sometimes, sometimes you have to think to yourself and say like, is this the right thing to do? And in this case, it's the it's the right thing to do. You know, it's it's the right thing to do to to remember this girl in a in a in a way. So when you see this memorial, you know that this should not happen again. But you know, I'm going to continue doing what I do because that's what I do. I'm going to continue trying to convince the TDSB to listen to me to do the right thing, to get out, um, get out of their, their own fucking, get out of their own head and their lives and realize that when they're in a position, when they're in a position uh, of power, so if you're in a position on the TDSB or if you're a school trustee, the keyword trust, right? The, the, the job of a board is to establish policies and to take care of the wants and needs of those who they're in, in charge of. So. The TD, uh, school board trustee would be parents, teachers, and children. They should be care and caring about the, the, the well-being and health of those, those entities. But in this case, obviously, they're not, right? The teachers have too much red tape around them. They, they're, 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 literally, they're literally stuck in a position where they can't help, right? 
going back to Sean Goldman's story, he spoke about, imagine this, this is what he's told me, told, uh, he, he said in uh, the newspaper, um, students held down the teacher and, and cut her with an exacto knife and took the same knife and slid it across her throat enough to draw blood. These are our, our, our students doing this to teachers. And what happens to the students? Nothing. Nothing happens to them. You know who has to go? The teacher has to go. If the teacher has a problem with this, they have no problem transferring uh, the teacher to another district. But as for, as for the children, you can't do anything because you know the parents may step in and uh, a couple things can happen. Like I mentioned before, you can get sued by the parents. The, the, they feel like you're you're singling out their child and making their child and messing with the child's self esteem. You can end up tied to a psychotic family, you know, a, a family full of abusers. Now you're tied to them, and you, and they, they might harm you after school. They might harm you in the shopping mall. They might start uh, stalking you at your house. You, you have no idea what these people are capable of. Right. And uh, finally, what 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 else can happen is a formal complaint where it comes that it goes, it travels in your file. So no matter as as a teacher, no matter no matter where you're going, how, how are you doing? No matter where you're going, uh, no matter where you get placed as a teacher, you uh, now have this complaint on you, even whether you're right or wrong. It's just this complaint. And we all know when you have complaints, it's kind of like you're. I guess your, your, your school record, when you're transferring school to school, you don't want to have, um, you know, academic flaws or plagiarism. Mind you, uh, one of the, the TDSB people was charged with plagiarism. It seems like his, his whole um, academic career was just a fraud, but who cares, right? He still gets a check. You know, anyways, I'm going to shut that down. I just wanted to give you guys an update of what's going on and and what I'm what I'm doing what I'm destined to do what what I'm going to continue doing because I I feel like I am uncovering um it started off as something that I saw that was I started off with something that I saw that needed attended to and it seems like it just it just exploded into this um this monstrosity of a problem you know, there, there's a problem happening inside the schools where kids are being abused by other kids. Kids are being abused at home and the teachers have have no power in doing anything about it other than hiding. My name is Kelly. Thanks for watching.